Hola amigos, amiga Claudia aquí. We're going to talk about the present perfect progressive tense. Uh, tiempo presente perfecto progresivo. And the way that is formed is you will take, um, what I'm going to use is jigsaw puzzles, pieces. And I got these at Michael's for 99 cents. And you can draw on them, color them. So I'm going to use it to go over the present perfect progressive tense. So if you're in my student, you've already learned subject pronouns. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching this video, right? So subject pronouns, yo, tú, él, nosotros, ellos. And I didn't write all of them down because I ran out of I ran out of jigsaw, jigsaw puzzle pieces. So in order to form the present perfect progressive tense, you have to have your subject pronoun, yo, tú, él, nosotros, ellos. And then you're going to need the auxiliary verb haber, conjugated in the present tense. And for yo, it's e. For tu, is as. For el, is a. For nosotros, is hemos. For ellos, is an. So that goes there. And um, I said it right there. That's where that verb goes. And then you're going to need another auxiliary. So now this means in English, I have, I have, you have, he has, we have, they have. But we're forming the present perfect progressive tense. It doesn't mean I have a, an apple or I have a car. This is a verb now. It means and we're forming present perfect progressive. So what you're going to do is you're going to, again, have your subject pronoun. And then your auxiliary verb, haber. And then your another auxiliary verb, estar, conjugated. So then you have estar, estado, estado. This is the, form, this is the formation for it. And that goes immediately after the haber. And so, pardon the telefono in the background. So you have that, and that piece goes right there. It does fit perfectly, trust me. So anyway, so we have that. So now you have subject pronoun, the verb haber, and the verb estar. And then, so now this means I have been. I have been. You have been. She has been, we have been, they have been. And of course in English we don't stop to think about these things, we just say them. And eventually that will be the case when you get really good in Spanish. Beginning of course it takes practice and get creative with it when you're learning. So again, now you have your subject pronoun, right? Your auxiliary verb haber. And then another auxiliary verb, a star. And then the next one is, now you need your ing endings. Your ing, like walking, singing, eating, thinking, dancing. Well, our, our, our ing is a-n-d-o. A-n-d-o. For a-r verbs. A-N-D-O means I-N-G. This one is for A-R verbs. And this ending gets attached to the base, which means I'm missing a, a puzzle piece right here, right? So you can say, I have been ing. And you have to put your base right there. So I have been ing. That's for AR verbs. So let's look at ER and IR. So for ER and IR, I'm going to move these out of the way. For ER and IR is I E N D O, Eendo, Eendo. So again, it's I have 
been ing. You have been ing. He has been ing. We have been ing. They have been ing. Which means these endings for ER and IR verbs get attached to the base. So that means I need another puzzle piece here. So that's it. That's how you do it to form the present perfect progressive tense. And if you don't understand what the present perfect progressive tense is, look for it in my next video where I will define every tense. So again, to form the present perfect progressive tense, you have to have your subject pronoun, your auxiliary haber, your auxiliary estar, and the gerund. These are called gerunds for AR, for ER, and for IR. And in English, they mean I have been ing. You have been ing. He has been ing. We have been ing. We have been ing, ing, ing. They have been ing, ing, ing. Muy bien. Muchas gracias, amigos. Hasta pronto. See you soon. Adiós.